Hey everybody, Tori LaFoon here again from Disc Golf Central. We're back with another review video. This one presented by Disc Baron, part of our summer series that's gonna be brought to you by Disc Baron and Sun King Discs. This review is brought to you by Disc Baron because it includes one of the discs that we got sent from Jake at Disc Baron. If you haven't checked Disc Baron out, you should definitely check him out, discbaron.com. Jake takes great care of his customers. He's a, a small town guy. He, he, treats people right he measures every single disc individually so this one for example was penned at 180 he weighed it in store at 178 to help you get the exact best disc for you and exactly what you're looking for so discbaron.com check them out we're very grateful to have a stack of disc mania from disc baron today we're going to be checking out the md2 the md2 is a straight to slightly overstable workable mid-range in disc mania's lineup we're going to be comparing it to some of the discs that i bag uh, we got the uh <clears throat> the Paul Macbeth uh, ESP Buzz. We've got an old Nate Doss signature uh, color shift TI Buzz. We've got the Discraft Wasp, uh, the Discraft Comet, Michael Johansson signature tour series from a year ago. And we've got the uh, the Truth from, uh, Dis from uh, Dynamic Disc. So we're gonna be sitting here in this, in the field today. Uh, we've got about 100 and 120 yards or so kind of caddy corner on this football field we're going to see how they fly i'm going to throw them flat you're going to throw them hyzer you're going to throw them anheuser we're going to see which ones go farther we're going to see which ones are more controllable hopefully this will help you make a decision as to what disc in the mid-range lineup is best for you so thanks for watching again thanks to this baron let's check out some throws so what i'm going to do is i'm going to throw these on a slight hyzer and we're going to see how they fare i'm going to work my way uh, from the buzzes to uh, the other two discraft mid-ranges the comet and the wasp then the truth and then the Discmania MD2, so you can see how they handle a headwind. First up, Macbeth Buzz. So that one came out a little bit wobbly, a uh, little bit of a funky release, but it held that hyzer. Finished pretty straight, even into a little slight headwind. It's kind of gusting, so sometimes it's pretty still, but sometimes there's probably about a two, three, four mile an hour headwind. Next up is the Nate Doss Buzz. So I put that one on a little bit more hyzer, and it's actually my more overstable buzz, even though it's one of my older ones. Uh, but you can see it just kind of held that hyzer line the whole way. It didn't ever really stand up, uh, but it fought the headwind. What headwind there is, it fought it pretty well. Now we're gonna try the Comet. The Comet's pretty understable, so I'm gonna put a lot of hyzer on it, try and back off of it a little bit because it doesn't take a whole lot of power. Um, we're gonna see what happens. So as you can see there, the Comet, even on that hard hyzer, it stood up pretty flat, even gave me a little bit of left to right and then settled down pretty straight. Um, not as far as the other ones, definitely, because it's not as fast, but still a pretty good, nice, straight control mid-range. Next is gonna be the Wasp. The Wasp is more overstable in the Discraft lineup, so we're gonna see what happens if I release it a little flatter, not quite on the same amount of hyzer. I'm looking for the same shot shape here for all of them. Well, <laughs> I lied. That was a lot more hyzer than I intended, uh, but as you can see, it held that hyzer even a lot more than my more overstable buzz would. That beaded bottom really gives it some more stability. It kind of just held that hyzer a whole way, but even for something as overstable as a Wasp is, it's not as overstable as a Buzz OS, but it's still overstable enough to hold that hyzer the whole way, which is really useful mid-range. Next is the Truth. So that was not an EMAC truth. That was one of the original runs of the truths. That wasn't the uh, the retool after the initial run of truth. So it was a little more understable. But one of the things I like about the truth is it has a lot of glide. So now we're gonna see how the MD2 stacks up to those things in this kind of hyzer to generally straight release into a slight headwind. see I put quite a bit of hyzer on that a little bit more than I intended to but the wind kind of picked up right as I was about to throw we've got planes flying overhead I just moved to San Antonio there's Air Force bases so you have to bear with me but what I like about that MD2 is that it pops up to flat on that hyzer release gives you a lot of glide and then a very pronounced forward penetrating finish so that was the hyzer release we're gonna come back we're gonna do flat releases from this spot and then we're gonna go to where there's a tailwind and I'll show you the anhyzer releases and hopefully 
with all these different shots, you can decide which one of these is right for you. Okay, so this round we're gonna go flat releases. We're going for distance. I'm gonna be aiming for this scoreboard out here that you can see just outside this ball field. Now, one of the things that, uh, that I really, really love about the MD2 is that it's very, very controllable. You can throw it with a lot of power and you can get that good S line for distance, but it's controllable enough to do the Heiser as you saw and the Anheuser. So we're gonna see how it fares against this stack of discs and then you can decide what you think is best for you. Now I will add a little disclaimer here. I'm not somebody who has a huge arm. I'm an AM2 player. Um, generally speaking, I'm you know high 800s, low 900s rating. So you can compare that to yourself and see maybe how that stacks up with your power and your skill level to get these kind of flights out of these discs. We're gonna start again with the Macbeth buzz. So that Macbeth buzz gave me a lot of turnover. I'm having some release issues right now with that buzz specifically. I'm not really sure why, but it kind of comes out fluttering, which contributes to that under stability just in the spirit of full disclosure. It doesn't necessarily always fly that understable, but it is my more understable buzz in comparison to this one. So. So that was a much better release. I released it pretty flat. It did give me a little bit of left to right action and then forward penetrated that, that fade at the end for a very overall straight flying shot. That was the titanium buzz, a Nate Doss run from 2012 or so. Now we're gonna go with Comet. When you put much power at all behind a Comet, unless you're Michael Johansson who is a wizard and knows how to throw comets perfectly. It does tend to do that. It does tend to kind of fight over and dive into the ground. Now we're gonna look at a wasp. A Little bit more hyzer than I wanted out of my hand. It was a little bit more similar to that hyzer shot that I threw before, but not quite as pronounced. But the wasp does tend to do that sometimes. I throw that when I really need something that I know for a fact is going to hyzer. It's going to give me all the same amount of distance as a buzz does, but I definitely want that left finish. All right, let's try the truth. So the knock on those original run truths that didn't have the EMAC kind of signature on them um, was that they were too understable. And you could see right there is that it did have a tendency to turn over, but it still fought back at the end. That's just not what they were looking for in the original Truth runs. I don't have any EMAC Truths, but I have thrown them before. They fly similar to a buzz. Uh, if you're a DD kind of homer, maybe you put that in there instead of a buzz. The EMAC Truth feels a little bit bigger in my hand than a buzz does. It doesn't feel quite as comfortable, but it's still a great disc. All right, time for the MD2. So you can see there how that MD2, it handles a lot of power without turning and burning, which is something that's really beneficial in a workable, slightly understable to stable mid-range that's going to fly straight for you. What I like about the MD2 is that it feels very, very comfortable in the hand. It has a, a very small dome, but that dome gives it extra glide to get that extra distance. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go down to the other corner. We're going to throw some Anheuser shots coming back this way in the tailwind. We'll see how it works. All right, so we're down here by that big scoreboard that I was throwing at before, we're gonna be throwing right towards the, the right edge of that big, uh, that big water drum thing down there. We're gonna be throwing Anheusers. Now, keep in mind, the headwind that was into me before is gonna be with me this time. So they're not gonna Anheuser as much as they normally would, um, but it should be pretty close because the wind's kind of coming and going. We're gonna start again with Paul McBeth Buzz. So I pulled that one a little bit wide of my line, but you could see that it goes out and kind of turns over and then flattens out. So it's meeting the ground at a very stable angle. So you're not gonna get kind of a roll out or a crazy skip. Um, that was a little bit of my fault on, on the aim, but the flight was, was pretty good. Next, we're gonna throw my more overstable buzz, that Nate Doss TI buzz. We're gonna see how that works. So that was a little bit low. So you didn't get to see the full flight and I apologize, but 
it held that same line. And if I'd given it a little bit more height, it probably would have fought out to that flat maybe a little bit of hookup since it is more overstable, but definitely a good Anheuser disc when you want it to make sure that it doesn't turn and burn over. Next is gonna be the Comet, which is inherently an understable disc. So I'm gonna try and throw it kind of flat on that same line and we'll see what happens. So maybe a little bit of overcorrection there from that second buzz. I gave it a little more height than I probably should have, but it still had that nice Anheuser turnover with a nice, easy finish. Next is the Wasp. That was probably one of my better rips of the day so far. You've seen them all, so you can probably attest to that, but it came out on that nice Anheuser line, it held that Anheuser for a while and then kind of S curved around and, and finished overall straight. So if you if you have a shot shape that you need that left to right action with a straight finish, good disc. Next is the Truth. Again, not the Emac Truth, but this is a little more understable. So I'm gonna try and throw it flat, maybe a, a little bit of Anheuser out of my hand. We'll see how far it glides and if it hooks up at all. A little bit low out of my hand. Again, I could have gotten more distance if I had put it up a little bit higher, but you can see just the understability of that mold kind of takes over at high speed and it really turns over and burns. It's not a very good Anheuser turnover disc because it's not as controllable as I would like it to be personally. Lastly, Discmania MD2 from Disc Baron. Let's see how it flies. So that surprised me a little bit. I've thrown this disc quite a bit, but I've never put it on an Anheuser in a Tailwind before. That to me flew almost like that wasp, which kind of speaks to its versatility. I put it on an Anheuser, but it still fought out at the end. It didn't give me nearly as much play in the, in the flight as the wasp did, but it held that straight line with an Anheuser, which again, just speaks to how workable of a disc the Discmania MD2 is. You can throw it on just about any angle and it's gonna perform for you, which is really what you want in a workhorse mid-range that's stable to overstable. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. This video was brought to you by Disc Baron, discbaron.com. They're a store in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Jake takes care of his customers outstandingly. He was so kind to send us the stack of Disc Mania. If you want to learn how to win this kind of cool, like it's, it's almost like color glow looking, but it doesn't glow. I already tried it, but it looks very cool. It's got that kind of triple stamp on it. If you want to learn how to learn, if you want to learn how to win this and this MD2, the FD from our last video and a, a disc from our upcoming video, the P2, then follow the link in the description, follow us on Instagram, you'll be the first to know when you can win this disc. Go check out discbaron.com, go give him a follow and a like on Facebook, uh, follow us on Instagram at discgolfcentral underscore, and we'll see you on the next video.